195 So in some trail, I'm not going to do the preaching until we do that 195. <laughs> Uh, number 195 was already. You can't have the number 195. No, 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 Chapter 6. 
the introduction era smanga zondi is very outdated. So this is the right one. Smangazondibandla is a sitting president of Stasim at UFS. He's not only Smangazondi. He is the sitting president of Stasim there. In the University of Free State. University of Free State. This is for you, man. The other day, David went out to look out for his brothers. Who were at war and he took some food and some stuff for them uh, to uh, see them at the world war. And when he gets there, he finds that there is commotion there. There's this big man who's shouting at everyone. Well, let them uncircumcise people. And oh, no, no, he, calls, he calls them all sorts of names. And when David gets there, who's just speaking and then they said this is only at the biggest warrior this is I can solve this problem and they say to him you, you can do that he says, no, I can solve the problem so you like, come, come let's prepare you. and he went down they put on some big garments of war and some they gave him a spear and a shield and he tries to go out because even inside him he understood that he can do this thing and David gets out and when he gets there before he takes some few steps he says and because the soldiers understand war, that they think King David will leave this thing. And David, because he understood the God of the war, and says, I don't need this thing. And as soon as they yielded to what he did not need, he said, I have a command of what he did for the war. Come on, 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 The title of our message is The Visibility of an Invisible God. Second Kings chapter 6, are you there, church? Let's pick it up from verse 8. Now the king of Aram was at all with Israel. 
After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel. Beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the men of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them. Tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel. None of us, my lord, the king. Said one of his officers. But Elisha the prophet who is in Israel. Tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Go find out where he is, the king ordered. So I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early in the next morning, an army with horses and chariots has surrounded the city. Oh, oh no, my lord. What shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us. Are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes. And he looked me upon and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. God in heaven, we await on you. Mm. For you are dependable. Mm -hmm. You are alive. Mm -hmm. You are our intelligence. Mm -hmm. You are our guiding light. <laughs> you are our insight info. Mm -hmm. And we need you. This is my prayer in Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. The visibility of an invisible God. Mm. So the king of Aram sets out to attack Israel. And every time he devises a strategy to attack. God gives a signal to Elisha. To send to the king. To guard such and such a place. Every time they came out with a strategy. God gave a signal to Elisha. To guard such and such a place. So every time they got there, they found that Israel. Israel was ready. Up until the time the king said it's not possible. There is one of us 
those who is with Israel. And the men were quick to answer the king as if they knew. And they, and they said to the king, There is no such a thing. There in Israel, there is a man called Elisha who, who hears everything you speak, even in your bed. Child of God, are we listening? Are you listening we to what we're doing? We, we, we want to expose you the, the visibility of an invisible God. A God who will hear what they said about you in your absence. A God who will protect you even when you are not aware. We want you to understand that He looks after Israel. That's not how And so your confidence is cut in the very fact that you are being gathered by such a God who, who, when you think somebody loves you, and he does not love you, you will never hold the other side. You do not see that you are surrounded by the wrong people. Yes, sir. The, the visibility of an invisible God. A God who says, now that they can see me, I will devise a strategy for them to see me. Because if the people, when they don't see, they take things for granted. And when that has happened, the king says we need to attack Elisha so that we can help these ones. When they rock up to Elisha, the man of God is sleeping. When, when the servants woke up, you see, when you rest in the bosom of Jehovah, you will be able to sleep. You know very well that you are in the care. It happened even when Jesus was in the boat. When the sea was raging. Because he knew what he was in the care of the master. There was no need for him to be up and be confused and be chaotic with everyone. There is a problem when a Christian starts taking sleeping pills. You are not doing something right. You need to understand that the Lord is looking after you. You need to understand that the God you serve is going to give you peace that surpasses all understanding. And so, when they surrounded Elisha and the servants, and the servants start crying. For the faithless ones are the ones to quick to be quick to cry. But when Elisha wakes up, understanding the God who is around him, he says, even though in his invisibility, I know he is around. Child of God, you need to understand that even though you cannot see in the presence of God, it is forever there. And therefore you need to throw that strength knowing very well that you are looked after. But Elisha now says, I need to get the confidence of this one. And start praying a prayer. To God and say, God, open this. Oh, if, as if God could open our eyes. That the accidents were supposed to happen, we didn't have that God open our That the way we could have died and we didn't die, God could open our eyes. That, that we, never, we never got infected with COVID-19 when we were supposed to be called, uh, infected. God. So, 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 
so that we can start to be humble. We understand that we are nothing in this world. There is a bigger God who surrounds us. And God opens their eyes. And they saw surrounding them. When you get to understand the visibility of this invisible God, they ensure that you speak as you please because you understand that you are protected even when you seem vulnerable. Amen. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Bukamarena, oh, Buka Samuel, how do you get out of the land? Smanga, no, 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 That is Smanga, my president, your ballet. Sing, 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 a cook, and a ballad, and some of the kitchen, man, and a second chapter, second Samuel chapter 6. Buka Samuel, Abu Bedi, how do you get out of Second Samuel chapter 6, read from verse 12. Allah, what is my name? Second Samuel chapter 6, the verse is 12. It says, Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought, brought, brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom to the city of David with gladness. <laughs> Twelve. Thirteen says, and so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had six paces that he sacrificed oxen and fattened sheep. Fourteen says, Then David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen effort. Fifteen says, So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. So, so, so what we see here, child of God, is that the Ark of the Covenant had been captured. And it was giving problems there. So what we are finding is that David has ascended the throne. Remember we spoke about him last And David makes the determination that I will not leave this nation without the Ark of the Covenant. What the Ark of the Covenant symbolizes. <laughs> what, what does the Ark of the Covenant symbolize? It's okay, let's take it to AY. What does the what does the what is the Ark of the Covenant symbolize? What, what does the Ark of the Covenant symbolize? 